What's going on guys? It Paul is back for another part of this little series here. Oh, we're making this uh, little uh, survival defense game mode here complete with all the AI and everything, right? So, the other... The last video I did, I did the whole thing where I set up the um, the level stuff for the... for the ant. Here. Uh, and I'm taking all of that based on level here, initialize level. And there's one more... Uh, thing of control that I actually want to add to this which I think is going to be important um, here I want to duplicate this and I want this to be difficulty now <clears throat> essentially the idea is question is, is whether or not I want this because, okay, so zero could be easy, one could be medium, two could be hard, three could be nightmare, four could be inferno, five could be uh, Armageddon mode, six could be Colossus mode, you know how they all name all that shit. So I could go, go, I could go pretty high. Considering if I, so if I keep it like a bite like this, that might, might be the wise thing to do, but the other thing that might be wise to do would be make it a numerator, but... Just to be honest, it's so much easier to do it this way. But the minimum difficulty is going to have to be one because the idea is that it's going to be brutal. So whenever you spawn a new one of these guys, uh, he's going to, yeah. It's going to get nasty. So if the difficulty is like 5 and his level's like 50, let's actually test that uh, real quick. So the difficulty, uh, let's actually, well, I'll expose it. Now, difficulty is actually going to be something um, that I'm, actually, I'm going to put on the, um, the main menu of the game. So this is going to have to be stored somewhere, and I'm not sure where. Um, how to really transfer between maps you know um, like that because I'll be in a different map I'll be in I'll be in the I won't be in this map I'll be in like the the menu map I mean I could load this map and then have a menu that comes up and that's easier but I kinda wanna also have a main menu because I don't want this picnic mode to be the only thing in the game so I wanna be able to access that like one step out of this game so from my main menu uh, and then be able to set the difficulty and set the game mode and the, like if I say hey I want to play the picnic mode it kind of just defaults me to this map right unless I set up a couple of I could do a couple different types of maps for this I could do one where you're actually on the the picnic table you know and it's mostly against bees but like I said if I do that then I either need to get the creatures to jump which I think is stupid or crawl up which I think would be awesome but that's difficult man there's so many op like there's so much that has to go right I mean there the math is there it is there trust me I know that that's but I'll be honest with you I'm too dumb to know any more than that that's all I know I know that it can be done I know that it can be like hey I hit right here so I can figure out exactly how what angle I'm gonna be here so that when I look up this way and then yaw, which I can't do anymore because I'm looking up. But assuming that I'm on the, you know, the wall now, I should be able to look like this from up there, and it should be able to to do all the uh, angles and shit. But how to get them to like, you know, reach a point and stuff? I had ideas for how to get them to to, to do stuff like if they came up like they were underneath this, like a spider was crawling underneath here, that when he got above you, you know, if, if his yaw was roughly the same, or his, uh, you know, his horizontal position was roughly the same, horizontal distance was pretty low, then he would drop down to attack, you know, and that's simple logic, but in this case, I'm um, just going to do this difficulty thing, so let's test real quick, I think that I already got him, like, spawned at, like, level 50, but let's turn the difficulty up to 10, just, let's just see if they have 3,500 hit points instead of, um, 350. So I should get some around here. Let's pause it. 
well, 1320. I think I think this is out of scope. Two hundred and forty four. Right? So we basically added Yeah, that times this, you know, whatever that is, five. That was five. Health went up by five. That should probably go up more. The bite damage should probably go up by more. Uh actually maybe less. Um, the XP value probably okay but I think that the health per level should be significantly higher um, like I don't think it should double maybe it should go up by 50 every time every level so they're a little bit more difficult <clears throat> so with 50 and 10 I get 244 I never call this, so it's not like that's happening. Weird. But I mean, I guess that's what it was. Right, 10 and 50. How is 10 times 50? Uh, oh, 244 is the highest a bit can go, or bite. So I gotta do an integer here. I gotta do these guys as integers. Ah, fucking balls. Well, yeah, let's just do an integer. Dag nab it. Well, I'll pause it while I fix that. Okay, I'm actually changing this name here to increment. I've already changed the variable type, but um, I unhooked it here. Yeah, because those have a max value. And I'm sitting here thinking, oh, I'm never going to go higher than that. Oops. But I, I really should actually account for it just in case. Here it is, integer times integer. So I was looking for int and int for some reason. Yeah. That should be about right. Those little rockets. Okay, they are... <laughs> they are rockets. Look at this. Here they come. And he's out. And he's in. And he's out. And he's in. And he's out. Yeah. Yeah, now that I'm not limiting that, they are literal rockets. Okay, so the exaggerated numbers do seem to work. And the game won't break if the numbers went crazy. Right? This is obviously stupid. There's no way we could play this. But, still cool. Okay. So let's say, well, the question is, is how, how do we want this game to play out, right? Um, well, how do I? Yeah, this is a, the, the problem with doing these series like I'm doing, like in kind of secret. I haven't even compiled any of the videos I've made yet. I'm on like part 28, you know? They're all just in a folder ready to go. Um, but uh, I don't get any feedback, right? So I'm doing this kind of by myself. So I, I mean, yes, the, at this point I would like to get some feedback, but I can't. So that's not happening. I mean, you guys are going to want to give me feedback. Maybe now you're going to be like, oh yeah, dude, I have all these ideas. But th the fact is, is that by this point it's too late. You know, I've already finished it because <laughs> I'm not putting it out until I'm done, which is a, I know, it's a stupid move and I shouldn't work that way, but that's kind of what I'm doing right now because uh, the reason is the main reason is is because it allows me to take my time with it it doesn't put me on any kind of time 
um, all of a sudden, now all of a sudden I have to do it. Because I haven't started the series yet, so I'm not putting anybody on the line. And I don't think that that's fair. I don't like doing series and then possibly canceling them. Because what if I run into something in here that I just can't finish? And it just ruins everything to the point where I just hate it so much I just can't complete it. That's really unfair to put you guys through that. It's fine to do that to myself and for you to do to yourself, but not to do to someone else. That's not cool at all. So that's kind of the half the reason why I don't put my series out until they're mostly finished. That way I have a back out. I just going to be honest with everybody. Uh, so I, just, I have started v a lot of series that just kind of just fizzled out or died off and went nowhere. And you guys never saw them and it just kind of looks like dead air to me. But I mean to you guys I know. But just know that something just I, I would have led you guys all down the wrong path. Or I would have cut yeah, I w it would have gotten cut off prematurely because I didn't have time or the inspiration anymore to finish it or something. That's why I don't do those, you know. So hopefully everybody understands that. Maybe you want me to change the way I do that. Maybe you want me to put these out no matter what, even if I don't finish them. But if that's the case, then you're gonna have to really, uh, really give me a break. You know, later on when I don't, if if that happens, if I do start a series that I don't end up finishing, you're gonna have to not yell at me. Well, you can yell at me, I guess, but you just know that I already knew that I didn't want to do it that way. <laughs> you know, that's why I don't. So let's put it back to a little bit more reasonable values here, and let's just kind of give it a test. So now we have no limit on the numbers. We did before, which I didn't realize, so now we don't. So level 50, now here's the thing. So every round of this game, so, uh, okay, back to the actual the original thing. How do we want the game to play out? Um, is this an infinite thing? Just how, 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 what level can you get to? Like how high can you go? Or is it like, hey, you just gotta get to level 25, or you just gotta last five minutes, you have to kill a certain number of them, you have to do something while it's happening, um, maybe there's ten waves of it that come through and then there's a boss at the end, maybe? You could do something like that. Um, what the boss would be, I don't know. It'd be a giant ant, I guess. That's the cheapest thing I could think of, but uh, there's other options for bosses. I have a tarantula. Uh, he's not... Mm, he's not PBR, that's the thing. But anyways, yeah, so I'm not real sure. So if every round that goes by it's like, okay, you know, certain number are going to spawn during this round and they're going to be a certain difficulty, right? You defeat all them. Uh, you have, you're going to have some kind of counter or meter or something to show that there's m how many are left. <clears throat> you defeat all them and then you get the great, you know, the uh, relaxing period, right, where you get to do stuff. I suppose you can buy ammo or... Um, set up defenses or something maybe I'm not really sure how crazy I'm gonna go on that because while these are pretty cool see how laggy I get because of that stupid camera thing but um I may or may not go too crazy on like letting you build stuff I may just stick these here for players to use for a little while but like I said when I get the they overheat so you can't just use them forever but it's fun to use anyway. You don't blow your own ammo. So I'll probably put a few of those around. But like I said, um, I'm not real sure like about the whole level thing because I don't know what max level they're, they're actually going to be. Because like if it's level 25, right? And let's say the, the I do four levels of difficulty, which is actually, you know, like easy, medium, hard, and then extra hard, right? Insane mode, whatever the, the last thing, you can call it anything. Um, what do we get in terms of ant speed? They're still pretty goddamn quick. Right? I mean, that's pretty fast. It's, it's a little bit more realistic, uh, to be honest with you. This actually, <clears throat> this actually feels like, well, maybe they're a little fast. But... In, in terms of real life, yeah, that's that's actually too fast. So let's let's adjust that really quick. This is I, I love doing this. This is fun. So actually, it would be simply the walk speed IPL. You know, maybe that comes down to like one. And now they really should not be that fast. This is them at max level. They got 5,100 hit points. But that's a level 25 ant right there. You know. He's probably going to bite you for an ungodly n number. 
So you better have health and you better have damage upgraded, right? If you want to survive to this long, you're going to have to play it out and get your guy up. I mean, doesn't that seem how it's supposed to go? Like, is that what we expect when we play? Right? Like, I can't get to level 25 because they're just too fucking hard, but it, every time I play, I'm getting experience and shit, and I can keep upping my damage so I can hit them for 5,000 eventually. You know? Because that's the other thing. I don't have the, you know, I haven't done that that math on the uh, player yet. So that So that health might be crazy. You know, 100 to 5,100. But but then again, depending on how much I... It's a big-ass balance that's going to get kind of confusing down the road, I guess. <laughs> that's my most optimistic uh, thought about the whole thing, because it's also going to balance with how much uh, damage increase I get per level and how many levels I can get and how fast I get those. Because if it takes you 10 years to get to level 25 here, like, you know, grinding every day for 8 hours, nobody's going to play it for 8 minutes because it's it's hopeless, you know? That's 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 one of the truths about the way games are, you know? That's why you think World of Warcraft appealed to so many people. It took the formula of, like, EverQuest, which took, like, a year and a half to get to level 50 and make made it take a week and a half, you know? And just made it all easy. Uh, and then focused mostly on PvP and all that stuff. You know, that I mean, I'm not, I'm not shitting on the game, but that was part of it, you know? They, they made things a lot more accessible by making it available to the more casual player. So we got to make sure that whatever we do here can play itself out in an evening or two. And that's it. I don't really want to capture anybody for that long, and I don't want to force anybody to have to do, you know, keep playing to in, to you know for a really long time and grind it out to enjoy it, you know? Um... The other thing too is, I mean, I don't even know if the game's gonna glitch out. So, <laughs> and I gotta go through a bunch of multiplayer shit too. I gotta figure all that out, and that's gonna be a whole new fun series. And I'm not doing it from the start. I'm doing it the dumb way, and I'm doing it that way on purpose, so that the multiplayer part is a true, true learning experience. So when I'm when I convert rats to multiplayer, when I'm done with that, I expect to be able to build my next game from scratch, multiplayer ready, 100%, error free from start to finish without ever seeing a red piece of text except for the damage numbers and that's my aspirations so yeah. okay well let me let me just think here real quick I know this this video might be kinda of pointless but it does it does I'm gonna keep it going here anyway I may not put it out but because I don't know if I'm actually gonna accomplish anything here I just I, I need to take a step back I'll be honest with everybody I'm starting to get into a, not a, not a panic but like kinda of like a, a, a a slight bit of overwhelmed mode I guess would be a good way to put that. Um, I want to see what his bite damage is real quick. I, I want to just tune these things. Because if he's hitting me for 500 trillion, it's not cool. 510. That's how much he's going to bite for. It's a lot. If you're level 25 and you haven't put a you know all your points into health, you're dead. So that's probably a high, I think. I don't think the ants really need to be all that dangerous, to be honest. They're going to be what you constantly have to manage while you have to fight things that are trying to attack you. Because right now I haven't even told the spiders to attack me, but they're going to. And but I got to get them spawning outside of the the uh, field too. So let's uh, let's. Let's tone that back down to one as well. At least one, I think. This should be... Yeah, maybe the damaging for like 300 or something. I don't really know. A hundred and ten. So this level ant will kill you if your level is one in one bite. That does, seems fair enough. And it's just over your damage. And that's him at level 25. I don't know. I mean, I can, I'll never know the balance yet, like I said, until later on down the road. But for now, I think that feels okay. The speed, I think, it seems okay, too. Right? I, I don't think that's too bad. I don't think that that's unmanageably too fast or anything. I think you can still shoot him. I know I can still shoot him. Um, the, you know, if, if there's any kind of defenses or anything involved, and if there's even more than one player, you could easily hold this off, you know? Um, you'd have to have people at each station gunning them all down. But I do want to do more stuff like um, 
I'm probably gonna do more obstacles around for the ants and you know you'll be able to like get up like on here you know maybe put a cannon or something up here on a cork or something like on a wine bottle maybe make some makeshift towers or something I mean I have straight up towers you know I could stick around I have uh, these observation towers but they're kind of out of place in the whole thing but then again I guess any of this kind of army stuff is anything non picnic ready so the theory is that the ants, you know, that the rants have gone around and set this all up as, you know, they're, they're idiots, right? They, they, as soon as they're given the order, your order is to protect a picnic. You know, they come out here with every piece of equipment they have, right? I park trucks and shit out here, you know? I'll do the, 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 the fucking barracks and everything out here. I'll do, you know, this is like the forward operating base kind of thing. Maybe I won't even have them spawn back here in the shade or something, you know? The, the, and, or I'll put uh, auto turrets on the corners of the base or something so if they go near it they just get um, obliterated and this is your base maybe I could do something like that and just go go for it like if, if, if I'm going to inject this kind of shit in I feel like it should just be all or nothing kind of thing it would be weird to have a couple of sandbags but if there's barbed wire fences and all kinds of stuff you know but then the question is, is if if the rats can do this, then why can't they just, you know, you know, just like build a big ass wall around the whole thing or something? But um, I guess that's not really the point. So I don't know how I'm gonna like how I'm gonna handle it. And again, I'm gonna know if I'm gonna like let you deploy stuff. But what I might do, and this would be kind of cool, would be right here would be. Um, a way to call in uh, allies, which would be like, like literally, like a, a fucking straight up uh, AI player, you know, like the way Left 4 Dead does it. So you like call in or something, or maybe it even starts with three other AI with you, and you could tell them, hey, you go here, you go here, and you go over here, and I'm gonna jump up here and float and cover anybody that screws up and gets it, lets anything get away. You know, maybe I'll be like, okay, uh, I'll come up here and I'll be like, okay, well, I have 500 points. So I'm going to pay 500 points. And then what spawns right here? Wait, is he, he's here. He's here. He's my baby. Where are you? But none other than the Hue Dog, which you can use to annihilate all the ants and spiders right you can fly around in that and blow them up maybe uh, I don't have a tank yet but if I did you could get a tank just park it right here and just blow anything up that gets right here just keep pounding the same spot you know that's your job or hire a tank you know which would be an AI guy and you'd be like okay I want you to park here but I want you to shoot here and he just points right at wherever you shoot and just fires as fast as he can over and over again until you give them a new order or any time an enemy gets you can tell them just keep bombarding it or wait for an enemy presence and look in this look in this radius I mean you can give them so many controls it's ridiculous and the players can give him those controls you know like you literally go okay you know I right click right here so here's where I want you to stop that's where you you put yourself and then when I hold you know a and then click here if I click and drag, I'll set the radius. So anything that comes within this radius, you know, I'll just, I'll be running around and then I'll just point at the ground, click, and then as I'm running away, I see this radius decal getting wider and wider and wider, and then I let it go. So anything goes in there, he shoots at it. And that's his orders. But if you give him too wide of a radius, he's turning around too much and shooting too many things, and you can't focus on anything. So you want to tighten that up, hopefully in any kind of choke point alleys, right? Which we don't have any of yet. That's the other thing too. The, the level's not really designed for any of this kind of shit yet, because they can come from basically anywhere, and there's no funnel points. So the question is, is whether or not I keep it like that. Maybe I let the players play sandbags. You spend a little bit of money, and you can place a sandbag. But the question is, is how the fuck am I going to align that to this? I mean, it's. Uh, basically, I'm just going to have to, uh, wherever you place it, I, I keep wanting to hit A to turn 
angle snap off and on. But um, you know, I could just align it to the normal, I guess, wherever you place it. You know, and then what will happen is any ant or creature that comes up uh, to it will uh, not run around it, but stop and attack it, and then I can give it some hit points. At which point you could repair it, upgrade it, right? But I don't want to make dungeon defenders. That's the thing. That's not my goal, and that's what that game does. It does it. It does it fine. Uh, but but a minor element of it might be kind of cool. Everybody can build the sandbags. Everybody gets to build the same thing, you know. And then you can mount these guns on any one of the sandbags, right? And you could box the whole thing in. I'll let you box the whole thing in. Question is, do I worry about snap? The other question is, is do I worry about overlap, collision? Do I red it out if it's if you can't place it there? You know, you're not allowed to place the sandbags, you know, like right here, right? That's not cool. They're never gonna be able to get that, you know. They won't. They're all their shit will fail. But like I said, the idea is, is when they hit this, maybe they won't go around it, but they'll um, they'll attack it. You know, but they have to hit it first. Like that's the only way they're gonna f care. If they hit it, they'll stop and they'll attack it. Which could mean that you could stick one way out here, right in their path that magically happens to you know, you know exactly they're coming from there somehow. And then when that happens, right, then they'll stop here. So that's that's an option, and I may do that. I may do that. I may give you the ability to play sandbags. Because it's pretty easy. I could hell, I could do it in probably like 10 minutes. That's, I just challenged the shit out of myself. I did. I just challenged the shit out of myself. Am I up for this? Can I do this in 10 minutes? Building? Because here's the thing. Well, okay. You gotta give me, you gotta give me some time to plan though before I actually go into action. I won't touch anything, but let me talk through it for a minute. Jesus, you guys are tough. <laughs> okay, so when you place it, I would need a mesh uh, or a material for for it being placed, right? So some kind of glow to it, green outline to it, something something like that to help it stand out. Um, that may or may not need the control to be able to swap that color to, between green and red or whatever color I want. Um, I may want to give it either some kind of an effect or or a material overlay driven by time based on damage that makes it look like it's wearing out because that's kind of only fair to indicate that it's almost out of health right so but it seems a little silly for a sandbag to start smoking but how about it starts pouring sand out all over the place and the more sand it starts pouring out all over the place eventually it just explodes into a poof of sand and maybe some cloth fibers or something right wouldn't that work I think so that's fair but that's a hey, that that's not fair I don't have to do that yet that's not in the 10 minutes thing the 10 minutes is just to get it to spawn let's be fair let's be fair um, the question is is do I want to let the player move it around and then rotate it and how do I want those controls to work first click you have to hold it and then rotate and how do I do the rotation does it do a, a look at to my where my cursor is pointing or does it rotate based on my control rotation you know because I've, I've seen some games where the, where the the item that you're spawning will rotate based on where your cursor is actually looking at so like if you move your cursor onto a a tree it'll it'll turn and look at face at that and then when you let go it builds it there you know um, that's the that's the other option for that I don't know if I even want to do this, but I, I kind of want to try it because it's, like I said, it's a challenge and I think it'll be fun and it might actually add something. And I'm curious to actually try to play around being able to do it. Um, I don't have any kind of currency yet. I do actually have, however, a coin. It tastes great. It's got 99 of everything. It's it's like one of those foil cheeses. I don't know about you guys, but I think those things are the best. I love them. And yeah, I drew the bear. It's not copyright. I made that up. It's retarded looking. That's the point. Yum cheese. With two M's. 
Okay, so do I really want to do this? Yeah, I'm going to do it, but um, yeah, I'm not sure how to handle the rotation of pl placing it down. I can easily get the normal based off the x vector of whatever I hit, I think. Yeah, because I get the normal off based off my trace. Um, gonna have to go into tick. That's the thing. That's the bad thing. Shit. I don't really know how else. Well, I've avoided it so far. Yeah, this was my faked attempt at creating dynamic global illumination by putting a point light at the trace of and a very low powered point light with no shadows at my location and the thing was is that it was actually it actually did illuminate fairly well and it followed perfectly fine but the thing was is if I was standing right next to say like a column and I was looking at the column as soon as I my I wasn't looking at the column anymore that light turned off just too instantaneously it was just too f everything flickered you could almost see the point light moving to the background and then moving to the foreground it wasn't an even distribution of light at all it was a, an asshole attempt it, it was really bad I even said it didn't look right but I kept it here just in case I wanted to maybe try something else on that regard uh, so I'm not using tick but I'm gonna have to if I'm placing down an object because I'm going to have to cons constantly read out in front of me the normal and the position in order to place this thing. The other thing too is where is this guy's pivot? It looks in a good spot, to be honest. Try the base. So at least I was smart about that. Alright. Um, well, let's do it.